All right, so this is the last video. The time has come to finish off these last two carvings. This one's pretty well sanded, still needs more sanding. This one needs to be sanded. I got my Peter Blair mandrel hooked up to my Dremel 4000. Good thing I had a couple extra Dremels at my uh, chainsaw carving tent because I got the one David Grass sent me hanging up over here with my flex shaft attached to it. So you guys, when you're doing this sanding, I just want to make a note. Go nice and slow. The faster you go is hard on your Dremel. And I've burnt up uh, too many Dremels because this is a lot of pressure on the motor. You know, this is just used to having little tiny carving bits in it, right? Not these big sanding wheels. So just go nice and slow. Take your time. And um, so what I'll do off screen is just get this one sanded up to the best, I think. This whole, this whole video and these carvings. Oh, I did burn this one off screen. I'll clean it up more of the burning. Um, it's just about this burl in here. You can see how much more it's cracked. This thing's not done cracking, okay? So this is going to be oiled. I'm going to oil this piece. So let me just get this sanded and I'll be back and we'll talk about sanding this more. Okay, so I got this one here sanded to the best I wanted to sand it. It's got this, remember, this is the weirdo carving. If you guys want to see all these videos on the Arbutus wood, I'm gonna, it's a series so you can look on my playlist. Look, it has one eye going up to heaven, one eye going down to hell. So anyways, that's it for that. This wasn't, I wasn't even going to carve this piece, but I just did. And I want to take a second and say too, like this is really frustrating for me, this wood here. Like in my videos, I've carved the hardest wood in the world. I've carved the most dense wood in the world. And after lately carving cedar and cottonwood bark, I haven't carved hard wood in a long time. But this wood right here, this Arbutus burl, this wood, is up there with the hardest wood in the world. It, you know, sometimes you get the Arbutus, it's softer. Sometimes it just depends where it grows and how it grows, right? I don't, maybe not the hardest in the world, but it's super hard friggin' wood, okay? And uh, like I said, I tr blew my Dremel trying to sand it. And that was completely human air. Those sanding mandrels are... They're not high speed sandering mandrels, right? Then I was running my Dremel full blast and you're supposed to run them at middle speed or slow speed. They're not meant for high speed. So that's that's completely human error. I've uh, wrecked too many Dremels sanding. So I just talked to Pete and we went over what would work good for me. And I think we both came to this conclusion. This is a weapon. This is the Dremel advantage, okay? It's discontinued now. It's a bigger Dremel. Um, so this is a lot more powerful. It's got a bigger motor. I don't know too much about motors, but Pete said it's the motor's bigger in it and it will, should last me good. So it does come with a flex shaft, okay? But the flex shaft for these advantages, okay, Dremel advantage, like I said, they're discontinued. See how it hooks up here? It's completely different than the um, normal Dremel flex shaft. I don't use this too much when I'm carving because, well, this thing's so powerful, it just keeps, I, I, and I'm such heavy hands, I always will be. It just keeps on breaking the flex shaft, okay? But so what I'm going to do today, I got a special sander that I used to use all the time. I haven't used it in a long time, but it's my old weapon that I used to use. So I'm going to pull that out and we'll figure out, um, we'll get this all bottom burl sanded to a real fine grit. I just got to find that weapon, so let's go take a look. So I've already looked in here, nothing's in there. There's some blown Dremels and whatever. Here's more blown Dremels and stuff down there. But let's look inside the junk drawer, okay? Let's see what's let's see what's inside here. We got a pair of pliers. Oh, we got an old cane eagle head. Got to use that one day. Yep, just stuff out. Something for my uh, thing thing. Stuff for stuff stuff. More burrs. Oh, look, more Christmas tree batteries. This is a thing for the thing thing. For the Fordham. Probably never use this. Yeah, lots of stuff as you go. More lights, LED lights that Pete gave me. Here's what I'm looking for. Something like this. Right here. Okay, so there's one. Here's another one. Sanding mandrels, different types. Here's another one. So there's a whole bunch of different types. You get sanders like this. I don't use these that often. Look, little freaking stars that are made out of abalone shell. I'll use those one day in a carving. And 
this one. So all we need to do is find the attachment and um, sani pads. Oh look, it's the Dremel 90 degree attachment. Yep, it's even got a sani pad on there. You guys want to talk about flex shafts? Oh, here's another Dremel. Yep. All right, so this Dremel 90 degree attachment can fit on the flex shaft. You need to wash it, put a washer in there. I forget how to do it, but in my earlier videos, I did show how to do it so you can look at my playlist. But so for today, I don't know if I'm going to be able to screw this right onto the advantage. I might just see if I can screw it right onto this old uh, when, when thing. These ones are good too. These ones last me a long time. So anyways, and um, we'll talk about these pads here. So these pad things are quarter, uh, one eighth inch shaft. You can get quarter inch for your Fordhams, but these are hook and loops. Okay. This is what I used when I first started carving hook and loops mean Velcro. Okay. You guys can buy these on Amazon. I'll try and find, try and find some to put in my store. So it makes it easy for you guys. My Amazon store, just go to the description down below. You can get the, I think this is a two inch size or you can get them even down to half inch. Okay. So these screw on, like for example, here's one with a shaft. So this one, I could screw this one off and then screw this one on too. There's also a different type. There's a type like this, but I'm gonna to need to put my camera in the overhead to show you guys, but this is a for a Fordham. This is a bigger style one. Okay, so apparently this does not fit on the wind. It has to screw up to the Dremel, okay? See, it just screws on. You have to use for this, you have to use that collet that you get with the flex shaft. See, it's got a square drive in here. Not collet, screw. Come on, zoom in. Anyways, that's square there. It won't zoom in. So you just screw it on. Okay, and you're good to go. And it's spinning. So you can sand. Okay, so once again, I suggest you don't run it too fast because the Dremels are not made to run big bulky things like this so this is the other type okay oh no this is the same type this is the other type this is for your bigger Fordhams or your die grinders or this is quarter inch shaft so you got this here this piece just unscrews okay once that's garbage you can get ones like this see it's just got a plastic screw just goes in there and boom this is good for sanding for your Fordham Fordham does have a 90 degree turning thing like this, 90 degree thing. I just haven't bought it yet. So you can also get just nice clear sanding pads, okay? So this, you just take this off. Got the sanding pad. These things aren't cheap though. Okay, there, there you got a sander for your Fordham. Right, so um, there's, um, let me see here. There's another thing I want to talk about too. Oh yeah, so for these sanding pads, like this is the one that I'm going to use. This is the exact same one that's on the Dremel, okay? Like I said, they come in little tiny ones too, like one inch or half inch or something. Peter Blair, my good friend, the mad scientist, you guys, lots of you guys know him. He, um, he introduced me, because these things were getting expensive to buy, just these rounds like this, but he got um, like a wood hole drill that goes in your drill a hole saw drill thing you know it's a round thing he got the one inch this is two inch I think or inch and a half whatever size it is he got me the whole the wood hole saw filed the sharp teeth away make the edge sharp so I got sandpaper like this 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 hook and loop this is soft and this is the sandpaper stuff on here right so you see it just sticks on uh, yeah velcro sorry he um, made me a hole punch, so instead of having to buy these two inch rounds, I just laid one down, got my hole punch, pretend this is a hole punch, put it on top there, bang, hit it with a hammer, and then I'd get this. So you guys, if you're going to use something like this, get yourself a hole saw, file the edges down so it's sharp like a straight knife blade, punch out your own uh, sanding discs, okay? So we got a whole bunch of different sandpaper. Here, let me get it. Okay, so I have all these different types of sandpaper I bought when I bought my, um, where's a 120 grit when I bought my uh, Arbor Tech. And here's 40 grit. These things are like star ones. 
Here's a 180 grit. So, come on, let's get out of there. So, yeah, you get little stars like this, the sandpaper here. So, yeah, I'm going to take this down to about what, 600 grit. So, I'll take it down to about 600 grit, this uh, burl thing. Okay? All right. All right, so. You know, kind of let your Dremel talk to you, right? If your Dremel's getting hot, turn it off. Let it sit for 10 minutes. Have a break. Then carry on, you know? So, because if you let your Dremel get too hot, what I always do, it's going to start smoking and you're going to blow the Dremel, right? So, let it cool off. Just like this. You don't want this to happen for fuck's sake. Fuck it. Okay, so I took it outside, blew it out with the air compressor. I, I sanded it down to 600 grit. Don't forget to sign your pieces. Jordy Johnson, 2021, Arbutus Burl, Vancouver Island, J. And sometimes I put these little fuzzy foam things on the bottom so it sits nicer. Okay, like I said, I took it outside and blew all the cracks out with their compressor. So here you can see the bird's eye in here. You know, like I said, if I carved this down deeper, I probably could have got those, rid of those little cracks. But I like them. Looks like a brain kind of thing. Anyways. And who knows if they would come back or not, too. So you see these cracks here? It's going to go up here. Who knows? It might go along the face. But this guy looks like that uh, wrestler. What's his? The Undertaker? What's his name? Uh, I don't know. Dr. Death. But anyways, I'll keep this one myself. So let's get the oil out here. I just went and bought some more today. And um, let's oil up this one first. This one's not that sanded too great. It's just like 80 grit with a flap sander. So... Anyways, let's sound this. Let's uh, oil this one first. One more thing I do want to say is why I'm going to oil this because oil brings the true colors of the wood out. Okay, but this wood's fairly wet, damp, I think, still a little bit, and um, it's going to crack more. So if I oil it and it cracks more, well, I'll just put some oil in the new cracks, right? Do you know what I mean? I'm not going to sell this one for this Christmas. Who knows? I might, but you know what I mean. So if you if I use spray stuff. Then, once it cracks, then you're going to have to somehow get that spray stuff in those cracks. But if you use oil, just re keep you can re oil this piece every year if you want. So, anyways, carry on. Okay, so this is the oil that I like to use. This is light mineral oil. You can guys can get this stuff at your uh, pharmacy. This was like eight bucks for this little thing, but it goes a long way. So, I figure we'll start with this one first. And I also want to say that um, that last Dremel that was smoking, um, it doesn't surprise me because I knew that Dremel was already on its way out from the noises it was making. So I just pour this stuff in little cups like this. You can use whatever you want. You can use foam brush, paint brush. So let's just uh, get this on here. You know what? Let's use the foam brush. I don't, I don't want to waste too much time on this. This one, you know, so I want to talk about, you guys Lots of ask lots of questions about pricing your artwork. Price it whatever you want to price it. That, this, not this one, this one, I don't care, right? But the other one, well, all this wood, I had to, if you saw my Vancouver Island trip, I had to climb up this little side of a little mountain thing to get this wood. This is not this one, but that one, the bigger one, is that one that I threw down the side of the mountain. Just a little bit, you know, that little climb that I did. And yes, Liz, I should have been wearing a hard hat. But, so, look, you look at this, okay? So I had to go up the side of the mountain to get the wood, okay? It's been a friggin' nightmare to carve. It's, this is basically my second day, okay? So a waste of, you don't call it a waste, but we'll just call it a waste. Waste of, two, well, no, we won't even call it a waste. Because we've had fun, even though it's been challenging. Two days to carve it. So what's it worth to you? For me, it's it's worth way too much than what somebody will want to pay for it. 
that's for sure so something like that I'll, I'll keep it for a while then I'll probably give it to a close friend because then I'm satisfied a close friend will cherish it I'll be able to tell him the story to get it and I'll show him the video the YouTube video instead of trying to sell it and it's <laughs> nobody's gonna want to pay thing looks like a friggin looks like Satan Nobody's going to want to pay all the time that I put into it. I didn't really pay too much attention on that curving anyways. Is this thing filming? Yeah, it is okay. So anyways, how about I get this done? And they say to put the oil on and wipe it off so you don't get any sticky stuff, oil left on it. But uh, I'm just going to oil this. I'll lean it against the wall for a few hours. And then we'll... Um, I want this oil to sink in deep too, so... I'll give it 10 minutes. If there's any oil on the surface, I'll wipe it off. Okay, so this one, it's going to go darker when the oil sets in more. As I don't know if it's as the oil dries, but I know it sinks more into the wood, and that's when it gets uh, darker. But really, there's nothing special about this piece. Like this back, this is the back with all that, that had the wicked bird's eye on it. Yeah, I signed it. So, just goes to show you, when you get the, the bird's eye or the nice burl wood or wood with special grain, you really need to sand it to get the stuff to pop out, right? So, anyways, carry on. Let's move on to the next one. Oh, and I, can, I believe, um, I'm no oil expert or expert at anything, but I believe the more coats of oil you put on, the darker it goes. So here's the next one. Here's the burl. You see, as soon as you put it on, it's not going that dark, but it's gonna. It's cool. I, I, I'm happy with it. So how about I get this all done? So let's zoom in here so you guys can see that. See the bird's eye burl here and stuff? How about I get this all oiled so I can concentrate? I don't know what I need to concentrate on, but why I even need to concentrate doing this, but let's just, I'll get it done. And I'll be back. Excited to see what the face is going to look like. You know, I just had this thought. Some people might be like, well, you said the wood's kind of damp. You can't put oil on if it's damp because water and oil don't go well together. Well, guess what? Don't care. Don't care. Okay. So let's see here. You guys can see some, bir some bird's eye up in here. See that right there? Mr. Weirdo, this guy is called. So, I just got all the oil on. I'm going to let this uh, dry out. If it doesn't suck all the oil in, I'll wipe some off. And then um, I'm going to give this, you can sure see the bird's eye right there. I'm going to give this, um, I'm going to give this like a day to, for the oil to really soak in there before I show you guys the end result, okay? So, um, yeah, so what, it's like 5 o'clock, what is it, Sunday today? So I'll, I'll finish this video 5 o'clock Monday. And then it will be out Tuesday or something. I don't know. I don't know. This guy's freaking weird. So I might even just burn this. I say don't burn your carvings, but who knows? So, and another thing I thought about doing this, I know, I said, I know who this guy looks like. I know who I could sell this to. I could sell this carving to a church because I'll tell them I carved Jesus. Huh? What do you think about that? I'll get some thorns, put it around his head. Uh, they also say don't oil, pour oil that you've used back into your container because you contaminate the new stuff. Don't care. Just that day. Just that kind of day. Okay, they got the first coat of oil on there. I talked to Pete about um, if I put in a second coat of oil, will it go darker? He goes, yeah, but I got to let the first coat of oil absorb into the wood then hit it with a second coat so the second coat of oil will go into the wood 
But yeah, this is how much I enjoyed carving those um, these guys. I'm going to have to go to my chainsaw shop and redeem myself. Because I got the bigger tools, they'll be able to carve something like this a lot faster than just using my Dremel and burning them out. But um, this one here, Mr. Weirdo, Larry's wife, Katie, really likes it. So I'm selling this to them for pretty cheap for the amount of time I put into this. So I'll send uh, Mr. Weirdo over to them. Yep. So anyways, I'm going to give this uh, overnight tomorrow. I'm going to give it overnight. Then I'll put in another coat of oil tomorrow and we'll see if it lets goes any darker. Okay, bye. Okay, so actually I have another plan. This black poly shade, I just put a few drops in the oil. In this uh, oil. So we'll kind of give it like a black wash. Just this one. I'm not going to touch this one. So, Abra, Cadabra. Yep. Your art, you can do what you want to do with it, right? That's what I'm doing. Doing what I want to do with it. Get her on there. <laughs> Screw it. Let's just go straight for the poly shade. <laughs> Make sure you wipe it off good. So you ask me, Jordy, are you satisfied with these carvings? Um, well, yeah, no, yeah, no, maybe, sort of, kind of, I don't know, don't really care, kind of through with it, kind of ready to move on, um, but I'm happy with the way that looks now, that's more type my style of uh, carving. We're all different people, you know, some people, <clears throat> like, hi Claire. Claire likes to do nice clean work and just make it nice and shiny and let the wood show through and the grain and all that stuff. Larry Dibbs is like that. Larry loves to work with the grains and different types of woods. Uh, I like trying new things, but I always kind of revert back to the same thing because we are we are who we are, right? And we do what we like to do, and that's what you sh that's how you should um, kind of go by things, I guess. In my opinion, just do what you like to do and don't care what. Uh, anybody else thinks i don't care what anybody else thinks okay i want to call this guy mr weirdo i'm calling him mr weirdo i want to say i'm a weirdo i'm a freaking weirdo we all got to be weirdo sometimes so um, let me get this thing on the spinner thing and show you what it looks like around the back there's a point on this carving i want to show you okay like i was telling larry dibs i showed him a picture of this i told him i really didn't care about the face because well, the wood was so friggin' hard to carve, it was a nightmare. And this carving was more about this part here anyways. So, got some nice red colors in there. But I want to show you, I think if I was going to, I'm going to carve this stuff again. But I think if I was going to carve it again, I wouldn't grind so much of the outside of the burl away. I think I would leave lots of this black in there. You know, because it gives it a more kind of an old rustic look. So I think I wouldn't grind so deep to take all this stuff off because this stuff was around the front at the beginning. It was all over here, but I ground it so deep, right? And I think I'd also leave a couple of those little pimples. And let's see, you'll get this kind of effect. So that's what I'll do next time. Next time I go back to Vancouver Island, Bob's going to help me. We're going to take the quad and we're going to be able to pull some more off the side of the mountain with his... um quad in that but well, it's this pulley thing whatever it's called winch so uh, i'd leave it more like this see i think this looks a lot cooler like all this i think it looks a lot cooler than just this this let's see here let's get a good light on it like this stuff this compared to this it's all different strokes different folks everybody hope you're all good that's the end of this video um thanks for watching and um be well and um ha happy thanksgiving 
Happy freaking Thanksgiving!